much to teach about, so much to to share, and the Lord wants us to be healed. It's in the redemptive plan, the redemptive work of the cross. What Jesus accomplished on the cross was about healing. Uh, of course, it's about sin too, but it was also about healing, and we see this in a couple of places. Let's look at Isaiah uh, 53. Let's read a couple of verses there. And it says, it was our sicknesses that he himself bore and our pains that he carried. But he was pierced for our offenses. He was cursed for our wrongdoings. The punishment for our well-being was laid upon him. And by his wounds, we are healed. Okay. Hallelujah. So he bore our sicknesses and diseases. He bore our pain, our griefs, our sorrow. Uh, it was on Jesus at the cross. And Isaiah was seeing it uh, hundreds of years before it happened. And he said, by his wounds, we are healed. It didn't say 50% of us or 60% of us mm -hmm. or uh, 80%. We, it's everybody, all of us. All we of, are the healed. All of the people of God. And uh, that was a uh, prophecy before it happened. But then let's look at, the New Testament and bring it up to uh, date here in uh, 1 Peter 2.24. And I'm sure this is a familiar scripture with many of you. And he himself brought our sins in his body, bore his sins, our sins in his body upon the cross so that we might die to sin and live for righteousness. By his wounds, you were healed. Uh, oh, hallelujah. So there's only one word difference there. Uh, and it, in Isaiah, he saw it, he said, we are healed. And now Peter's writing and looking back to the cross, and he says, by his wounds, we were healed. Hallelujah. It's a done deal. That's and, uh, you know, the leper came up to Jesus one time and said, if you are willing, if you're willing, you can heal me. And Jesus said, I'm willing. I, it's his will for you to be healed. So don't get caught up and and in confusion about whether or not it's God's will. He sent Jesus to the cross for you, for your sins, and for your sicknesses and diseases so that you can walk on this earth in healing. Now, we know you'll be healed in heaven, so that's not the issue. It's be healed today, and don't wait on it. Let's, let's be healed today. So this message is... Uh, an adventure. It's an event. Amen. It's not just a message. It's an event. What we're doing here is an event. And I'm going to elaborate on it as we go because I'm expecting some things to happen. Amen. And what I'm going to be encouraging everyone is to turn your faith on. You all have faith. Hallelujah. We were all given faith. Romans Amen. 12, measure, measure, 3. Faith. Everyone that's among you has been given a measure of faith. So you had faith to be saved. Use that faith that you have to be healed. But the interesting thing is we have to make a connection between the faith and the healing. There has to be a connection there. And, and so let's just look in Mark and Luke. We'll go to the fifth chapters and see that faith and faith power go together and they have to make that connection now uh we know from luke chapter five and we'll look at this in just a second but jesus had the power and so when he was walking on the earth he had the power and so all you had to do was connect with that power and so let's look uh at mark five first it talks about a woman that was bleeding she'd been bleeding for 12 years gone to the doctor spent all her money she had uh nothing else and she got worse. The doctors didn't help her. That have, happens to a lot of us. They, 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 they're not able to help a lot of the issues that we're dealing with. And so we need Jesus and we need to connect Ooh, with him. Amen. But we've got to activate our faith to catch hold of the power and activate that power. There has to be that connection. You have to make that connection. And we see here with this woman that she made the connection. Yes, Read Mark chapter 5, please. And immediately Jesus perceiving in himself that power or virtue had, had gone from him, turned around in the crowd and said, 
who touched my garments. And he looked around to see the woman who had done this. But the woman, fearing and trembling, aware of what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be cured of your disease. Ooh, hallelujah. hallelujah. See, she kept she activated her faith by saying it. She said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be healed. And so she kept saying that. She pressing through the crowd, pressing through the crowd. And she got hold of his garment and the power came out. Hallelujah. Jesus she connected. Was just was just con just walking along. He is carrying the power, but he was just walking along. A and her faith, see, connected and brought the power into her body to be healed. And that's what's important for both of us. We, For all of us, we have to connect with that power. Okay. And there are, there's many in this Zoom meeting tonight that have the, the healing anointing, that have a healing gift. And we are going to connect with each other tonight. We're going to put our faith uh, out there and we are going to connect uh, with each other and healing will occur and be manifested this night in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. This is a powerful group of individuals. Okay. Hallelujah. Okay. So I have two examples I want to talk about, about faith and power to show you how they go together to bring healing. And the second one is in Luke chapter five. Uh, again, it's about Jesus and it says Jesus uh, had the power. He, he mm -hmm. had the power with him to heal. Mm -hmm. And so let's look at this, how it was healed. The power of the Lord was present with him to perform healing. And some men were carrying a man on a stretcher who was paralyzed and seeing their faith, he said, friend, your sins are forgiven you. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, get up and pick up your stretcher and go home. And immediately he got up before them and picked up what he had been lying on and went home glorifying God. Hallelujah. 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 So what, what I want you to see from those two passages in Mark 5 and Luke 5, the power. Luke 7, and, I think. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Mark 5 and Luke 5. Oh, uh, they faith connected with the power and the person was healed. First it was the woman and then it was the paralyzed man. But see, Jesus looked not only at the paralyzed man, but he looked at those people carrying him. Uh, so he had four friends and they tried mm -hmm. to get into the house. They couldn't get into the house. They uh, came up on the roof. Uh, they tore off the roof and uh, dropped him down. Now they had to have faith to get up on the roof and tear a roof off and drop down a paralyzed man in front of Jesus. So all four of them had faith. And then the man uh, that <laughs> he was on the mat, he let them drop him down. He, he had to have faith. And so when Jesus saw their faith, so talking about corporate faith here. Yes, so amen. He dropped, amen. He saw their faith and he said, uh, first of all, he got rid of the hindrances. And we're going to talk about hindrances just a little bit today. But Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. So that had to be a hindrance. See, that the sin consciousness uh, may have been keeping him from receiving his healing. So Jesus dealt with the hindrance first. And then he said, rise and take up your mat and walk. Hmm. Now, I give a quick personal story that, uh, and I've told this before, but one time I was sick and I was laying on my bed and I was running a high temperature and, and uh, I heard the Lord say, rise and make up your bed and walk. Okay, so I rose and I uh, got out of my bed and, and I started walking down to the uh, foot of my bed, but I had not made up my bed. That, just in case this didn't work, I was going to go back to bed because I was sick. Uh, mm -hmm. But we were about to go on a, a, week's, vacation. Trip, a week's vacation. And here I am sick. I'm just going to be in bed all week. So what I was thinking, but he said, rise, make up your bed and walk. Well, I had physically risen up, but I hadn't spiritually risen no, up. Uh, when I got to the foot of the bed, 
he said the same words to me again, rise and make up your bed and walk. I knew what he was talking about because I was intending if this didn't work, I was going to go back to bed. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, so I turned and I made up my bed. Amen. And when I walked down uh, past the bed this time, uh, and by the time I got to the door of my bedroom, I was healed. Hallelujah. So we went on our Thank week's you. vacation. And, and so there's something about you have to rise up. And it's not just fit something you do physically. I'm talking about spiritually. You have to rise up and connect and put your faith in the power. Now, I want to, we're going to take a diversion here. I'm sure you've heard the kinds of uh, verses that we've talked about before uh, many times, but I want to go uh, deeper and uh, look in a, in a greater measure uh, of healing, to talk about healing more, and possibly some of this is going to be new to some of you. But we've been laying a foundation in, in this series to get you ready for what I'm going to say now. And uh, because we don't see Jesus physically walking with us, uh, and, and so we knew he had carried the power, but now we've got to look at other uh, ways to get the power. Now, you can be healed on your own at home because you carry the power and you have faith within you and you can, can make that connection by yourself. But I want to say there are other ways too, and that's what we're going to look at tonight, a, a way that you can, uh, in cooperation with other people, in cooperation with other people, and that's what we're going to do today. So I'm encouraging everyone to start building your faith and releasing your faith uh, tonight for healing and you might not healing need healing but i guarantee there are people here who need healing mm -hmm. and uh, uh and uh, this is something i did two weeks ago the lord spoke to me two weeks ago and uh we were on sherry and i were on the way uh to an international uh meeting on missions and uh, some of you were there um uh, that day uh, but we were traveling and when uh when we were traveling and let me say this I had been invited to the meeting, but I had not been invited to speak. So I didn't know whether I'd speak or not. And uh, so here, Sherry and I are getting ready in our hotel room, getting ready for bed. Sherry lays down, she goes to sleep, and and the Lord begins to speak to me. And and what I'm going, what I'm going to t explain to you now, this is all related to what's now going to happen tonight. Um, and He said, first of all, He said and this was two weeks ago, he was talking about that meeting I was going to. It was an international meeting. I didn't know how many people were going to be there, and I had not been invited to speak. But he said I would speak, and that 20 people, at least 20, 20 people, people, would be healed, healed when I was teaching. And so uh, here, I want you to get a perspective on this. Here I am in heavenly places, seated uh, with with the Lord Jesus Christ and he's talking to me and he's giving me a kingdom strategy. See, uh, most people are in the earthly realm. They consider themselves to be human. And when they get sick, they, they pray to God uh, to receive healing. But in reality, God has multidimensional way of thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, he's outside of time and mm -hmm. yet he's here in time mm -hmm. with us. And he's also thinking about time in the future. And so he's thinking multidimensionally. Well, you and I should also, because yes, we're on the earth, but we're also seated in heavenly mm -hmm. places with Christ. That's Ephesians 2, 6. And so he said, and so here I am, I'm seated in heavenly places. I'm listening to him and I'm, and I'm getting a kingdom strategy and I'm going to apply that kingdom strategy tonight with with you if I can get you to agree with me and we agree and, and so that we can activate our faith because I'm going to show you how to, to receive the fullness of the power even tonight here with uh, with all of us receive the fullness of power and we get the access mm -hmm. to the power through the gate of healing a supernatural gate of healing now you and I are seated in heavenly places and Jesus gave us a mission and the mission was to bring heaven on earth. And so I want you to mm -hmm. see yourself as in heaven and, and bring Hallelujah. heaven to earth. Heaven so the way earth. we're going to do it is to open up gates of healing. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a gate of healing opened over this group. We're going to open it up tonight and I'm going to explain you how you do it. And uh, so there were, I said there were going to be 20 people. That's what the Lord said. There's going to be 20 people or more 
at least 20 people will be healed when I'm teaching. I hadn't even been invited to teach. But then I uh, <laughs> we went to the meeting and uh, Tuesday we had a, had a meeting that nothing uh, happened. Nobody said anything to me. Wednesday morning happened and uh, nobody said anything to me. Thursday afternoon, <laughs> the coordinator the of the Wednesday meeting. Wednesday afternoon. Uh, Wednesday afternoon, uh -huh. the coordinator of the meeting came and asked me to teach on Thursday morning. Well, I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> he just hadn't gotten around to it. That's right. <laughs> because the Lord had already told me that, and that I was going to teach and I'm, I'm going to teach basically what I'm telling you right now. Is this is what I learned just by being with the Lord. And I've, I've shared some of these things with a few of you before, but in general, this is going to be new for the group. I have been talking about gatekeeping. Amen. Okay, so we can access the power through gates of healing. And uh, I, I just want to say that to begin with, uh, because there are some of us that are gatekeepers and others are watchers mm -hmm. and intercessors and prayer warriors. And we all need to work together <laughs> to get the gates of heaven and gates of healing fully open. Now, where are these gates? Well, you know, Malachi said, uh, open the floodgates. This is 310, open the floodgates and uh, he'll pour out all kinds of blessings upon Amen. us. Well, healing's Amen. a blessing, Amen. let me tell you. So I'll ask Sherry to read uh, Malachi 310. Uh, throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. And I know you're familiar with that, with that verse. Uh, and is really talking about tithing and offerings and things like that. But I'm just showing you there are gates of heaven where we get blessings. And uh, another one uh, is um, uh, from Psalm, Psalm 119, which... Uh, Psalm 118, 19. Psalm, I'm sorry, 118 uh, verses. Uh, of course, it starts in 17, goes on down mm -hmm. to 19. But uh, this is one of the verses that the Lord gave Sherry uh, when uh, the doctor said she was going to die. So tell us... Uh, yeah. It says Psalms 118, 17, it says that I shall not die, but live and declare the works of the Lord. Okay. And then okay. go on ahead and read that verse 19. Okay. 19 says, open for me the gates of the righteous. Okay. I will enter and give thanks unto the Lord. Okay. So Hallelujah. There, there are all kinds of verses about gates. Gates. Supernatural gates. And righteousness. I mean, that's a right a gate of righteousness. Oh, uh, hallelujah! That, that's not a natural gate. Let me tell you, that's a supernatural. Amen. Uh, Amen. Sa a supernatural gate. And so we can then open these gates, and that's where we have access to the power of God. And an example of it, I, I, I'm I've got this condensed down, and you might want to take some notes on. You may want to watch the video again. Uh, but an example of where there was a gate of healing open, and that was Bethesda. And uh, there, there there was healings happening there all the time. There were multitudes of sick people and blind, uh, lame and blind, and, and they were going there because they were being healed. Uh, they, nobody would have ever gone there, but there was a gate of healing open, and, and people were being healed. And I'm going to ask Sherry to read this. John chapter 5. John chapter 5, verses 2 and 3. Now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool, which in Hebrew is called Bethesda, having five porches. In these uh, porticos lay a multitude of those who were sick, blind, lame, and paralyzed. So they were attracted there because there was a gate of healing there. And, and so... Uh, some reports say that there was an angel that came down, stirred the water, and then the first one in got healed. That's a gate of healing. Uh, and, and sometimes it just, it, God just wants to pour out mercy upon us. And Bethesda means house of mercy. He is pouring Amen. out, he, out mercy. healing. Okay, now, even though there's a gate of healing, we're going to open up a gate of healing tonight so that it's fully open, so we can have full access to the power of God. Uh, you still have to use your faith. And see, there was a man laying there. He, he'd been paralyzed for 38 years. And Jesus came up to him and said, will you be made whole? And he said, oh, when the water stirred, I, I have no one to get in there. I'm paralyzed. I, I can't get in the water. And, and Jesus said, uh, take up your bed and walk. Yeah. Oh, so he had to use his faith. He had to act. 
Oh, hallelujah. That's yeah, like, I to... like I did when I was sick. I had mm -hmm. to get up. I had to act. And so the same thing's going to happen tonight. We're going to open up the gates. The power is going to be here. Corporate uh, anointing is going to be here. Corporate faith is all going to be in operation. So I'm, I'm asking everybody to let your faith arise. Faith arise because there are going to be people here healed tonight. Uh, well, let me say this. this. Okay. Catherine, in Catherine Kuhlman's uh, meetings that she had, it was a healing gate that was open. It was open through her. But it, and the Holy Spirit, but it was open and people came to those meetings. They came to her meetings. They came to Shambach's meetings. They came to Smith Wigglesworth's meetings. They came to Kenneth Hagin's meetings expecting, expecting to connect and receive their healing. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. And that's what we want in this meeting tonight. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And, and you know, even though I was going to that meeting, that international meeting, they were coming there for a different topic than not healing, for missions. And so they didn't come with high expectations on healing. So I had to get everybody within a few minutes. I had to lay out this uh, uh, scenario on this plan to, to them like I'm laying out to you tonight. But when we opened it up for people to come up for healing after I'd encouraged them. And I said, now, if you're, if you're being nudged by the Holy Spirit, that this is your time to be healed, uh, then, then come up here. And when they were coming up, they began counting themselves. Yeah. Numbering themselves. I'm number 18. <laughs> Cause they want to make sure there's 20 and they want to be in the 20. They wanted to be in the 20. And uh, we saw people with uh, intestines being healed yes. or with uh, joints, uh, that were injured, being healed, uh, knee. Uh, yeah, Brother Doug's knee uh, was healed. healed. Hallelujah. Uh, a a woman's arm being healed. And so 20 people at, at least, and I don't know how many. And uh, there weren't that many people there. There were just like 60 to 80 people in the, in the meeting. And, and so the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ and the Father, see, so had a plan. And the same thing tonight. There's a plan. We have a plan. Hallelujah. And we can get together in agreement and operate with through our corporate faith. Uh, then there's going to be healings tonight. And we're going to open the gates, uh, the gates of heaven. And now the thing that closes the gates of healing mm -hmm. is unbelief. And Amen. so I need to just address that for just a moment. And, and uh because in Luke 5, we read this while ago in verse 17, the power was with Jesus to heal. But when he got to Nazareth, and this is uh, Mark chapter 6, I'll ask Sherry to read it in a minute. Uh, but when he got to Nazareth, he couldn't do any miracles. But, but the power was with him to heal and do miracles, but he couldn't do any miracles there. Why? Because of their unbelief. And so I'm going to ask Sherry to read this verse. Mark 6, verses 5 and 6. And he could not do any miracles there except that he could lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their unbelief and he was going around the villages teaching. Okay, so when Jesus encountered unbelief, what did he do? He started teaching. Oh, hallelujah. Because the way he rid of unbelief is, is to teach. was to teach and to preach Amen. the kingdom. Amen. That's Amen. what he did. He taught. He taught the kingdom, he preached the kingdom, and he demonstrated the kingdom with healings uh, and signs and wonders. Oh, hallelujah. 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 Okay, now, you might say, well, are there others? Yeah. Mark 7, he, he was with a crowd of people, and mm -hmm. uh, they brought a man to him that was deaf and uh, had an impediment in his speech, and he was in a crowd of people, and Jesus took him away from the crowd to a private place. Why was that? Because of unbelief. Uh, Jesus. You might say, oh, yeah. oh, oh, but he's Jesus. Yes, he's Jesus, but unbelief can hinder the power. Let me it, can this close, it can close the gates of healing, okay? When I went to pray for uh, a man named Mark in the hospital, he's in ICU, and they said everything had shut down and that he was dead. And they were waiting uh, for some family members so they could take him off of all of the, the, the machines that he was on. And, and so I was called to come and pray and I went and there were, there were six people in the room when I walked into the room and I had to ask three of them 
to leave the ICU room. I had to ask them to leave because what I saw in them was they had come to pay their respects because he was dead. And I had to ask him because I knew that God, God had already told me that he was raising him up. And, and so I asked those three people uh, to leave the room. The other three people uh, stayed and we began to praise the Lord. We began to worship the Lord. And then the Lord told me to speak to Mark. I spoke to him three times. He opened his eyes. He took his wife's hand. He had been in a coma for five days. And, and they said that he was dead. All of his organs had, had shut down and turned black. And, turned black. And, and the doctor was waiting in, just right outside the room to come in. And then the nurses were waiting to unhook him from all of the machines. But God raised him up. And one of the reasons God raised him up was that he had not accepted the Lord. And at that very moment, uh, we, we led him in the prayer of redemption and salvation. And he accepted the Lord and he lived and he lived for two or three years uh, after that. And, and I give the praise to the Lord for that. But what I'm saying is that I saw the unbelief and it would close that gate. And so I asked them to leave. They left. God did what he does best. He does miracles. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have a couple of more points I want to make quickly. And that is we're gatekeepers. Some of us are gatekeepers. Some of us are watchers. Mark 13, 34 uh, talks about the kingdom and, and, and the Lord. And he said the landowner uh, had... Uh, uh, a trip to make he made a trip that's talking about Jesus going to heaven and he, he left his uh, servants in charge read this verse here please Mark 13 verse 34 out of the message uh, translation it's like a man who takes a trip leaving home and putting his servants in charge each assigned a task no, you and me we're all yeah, assigned a task. we all have a responsibility and commanding the gatekeeper to stand watch. Okay, so he divided all of his servants. This is New Testament. This is Jesus speaking. He divided his servants between the gatekeepers and the non-gatekeepers. I don't know whether you're a gatekeeper or not, but I know Sherry and I are gatekeepers, and I imagine many of you are too. You can open a gate over your house. To, yes, you can amen, open a house amen. A, a gate of a feeling over your house. And so that's And some of you need to do that. And that's the reason we're going through this today is to show you some practical kinds of things, uh, ways to receive your healing. And this could be between you and the Lord. But tonight, this is a big thing. This is significant because we're many of us. That's the reason I say this is an event. This is not just a message. This is an event where we're going, we're going to open the gates uh, wide. And I'm going to show you how we do it in a moment. Uh, but we're just uh, finishing up here. And... and and I want to say that we're gatekeepers. And you know, in John uh, 10, Jesus was the shepherd and uh, some of the gatekeepers are going to open so that he can come in. Okay, Amen. read that verse. John 10, 2 and 3. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him. Oh, Woo, well, hallelujah. Well, Jesus is the healer. We're just opening the gate for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. To come in. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And move Amen. among us. Thank hallelujah. You, Jesus. So we're, we're opening the gates wide. Now, how do you do it? Well, I, I mean, the Bible is full of it, uh, but prayer is certainly one way to do it. There's a lot of other ways, uh, but Let's just think about uh, the Psalm, uh, Isaiah 45, 8, I believe that's what it is. Open up, O heavens, and pour out your righteousness. This is a, this is a prayer. Open up, O heavens, open up the gates. Open up the gates of heaven, Amen. pour Amen. out righteousness, and then read it in that next verse. Out of the Amplified, it says, rain down, O heavens, from above. Let the clouds pour out righteousness all of the blessings of god all of the hallelujah. blessings of god so we need to be praying that the heavens be open the gates be open for us so that the gate so that the blessings can be poured out all of the blessings of god are going to come up there we're seated in heavenly places Amen. and we're going to have our responsibility our mission is to bring heaven on 
earth. Amen. And Amen. I want all of us to be in agreement here. There are people that need healing tonight. Yes. And so we're just. Or you may have family members that have that need healing we're tonight. We're praying. We're praying for the gates to be open wide. We, we Sherry and I have been praying Amen. already uh, for uh, over this meeting. And, and it's not a physical location. You think about those five men. Right. Jesus saw their faith. Some of them were, one of them was in the house and four of them were outside the house. And yet he saw their faith. And that's the way I see all of us. We're kind of like those uh, those men that brought that paralyzed person there. We brought somebody here tonight that needs to be healed. And, and we're throwing the gates of healing open wide so that we can receive healing. Whoever receives healing, whoever needs healing, uh, we're going to open it wide. But what we're going to do now